you're thinking of running an equity crowdfunding campaign, you might be wondering, what documents will you need? I've got you covered. Hello, I'm Adriana Tarrida, crowdfunding consultant. Welcome to my channel. Before we go and look at the five documents that you will need for your equity crowdfunding race, I would like you to consider the following three points. First of all, Whatever you share during your equity crowdfunding campaign is going to be public. Yes, you'll have a bit of control on who sees your pitch deck and who doesn't, but the reality is that if your competitors want to get hold of your pitch deck, they can do so with a fake email address or through a friend or whatever that is. So be careful with that and be very comfortable with what you're sharing. My personal opinion and my recommendation to my clients is to share as much as possible mainly because, in my opinion, a uh, startup, it's all about execution. Uh, ideas are free and you can get ideas anywhere. And even strategies and tactics might not be that innovative and not that particular. It's all about execution. So you need to show on those documents that your execution is really good and that you're getting traction. The rest, you know, as I said, it can be public already, it can be easy to get hold of. Um, so, so don't worry too much. Don't worry too much and share as much as possible. But you need to feel comfortable as well, okay? So think about that. My second point is all about the look and feel of those documents. They need to be look at a certain level of professionality. Um, investors will understand that you're a startup, you don't have many resources to spend on design, etc. But they need to look at a minimum standard, I would say. And they need to look consistent as well with your website, your social media presence, and any touch point that a potential investor might have with you. Um, so think about that because worst case scenario, if they don't look very nice, those documents, uh, you will look very unprofessional and unprepared. Worst case scenario, in reality, you will not get the investment that you need. So think about that as well. Finally, the last consideration before we get into the five documents that you will need, it's all about the call to action. What you want with those documents is that people invest in your company. Um, so make sure that you're weaving it in uh, and perhaps make it quite explicit in some of those documents that you want investment, right? So don't give it there and don't be too subtle because people might read a pitch deck and think, oh, nice idea. I don't know what to do with it. So make sure that people know that what you're after is investment. Okay, so without further ado, Let's go to the five documents that you will need. First of all, I always recommend my clients to start with an investment summary. So this investment summary is one side of an A4, um, and you will have to do a very uh, difficult exercise of summarizing what you want to say and what messages you want to send, right? Because it's not easy to fit everything in one side of an A4. I usually structure those um, investment summaries in two columns. One narrower on the left hand side and the right hand side is a bit wider and starting on the top with the very very basics uh, on how people can get hold of you right because if that document is forwarded you want people to be able to reach you back so start with that uh, start as well then next uh, details about the round how much you're asking for how much you are going to give in terms of equity um, if you're eligible for any tax relief, for example, in the UK, SCIS or EIS, a lot of in investors are interested in this kind of details. And then maybe on that left hand side, you can put things like traction. Well, what I, have you achieved so far in your company uh, that makes it investable? Finally, uh, you can put a, a pie chart, for example, with the use of the money. How are you going to use that money? Investors really like to know that you, their money is being used wisely. So if you're using it for marketing, if you're using it for business development, for R&D, for technology development, whatever that is, uh, put it down there on the left hand side at the bottom. OK, and the main body of, of this uh, investment summary, you can start with your elevator pitch, uh, a couple of sentences that describe what you're going to do um, and then start with the problem with the customer problem with your solution that you're proposing with your idea. Um, things like the market, how big is the market that you're trying to attack? That you'll need to, to put in there, so be very specific, be to the point. Um, and my recommendation would be start with a 
a good version. Spent no more than a week, I would say, working on this um, and, and refining it a bit internally in your company and then start sharing it. I think that's the best way of getting good feedback about that one pager. Share it with your inner circles first, um, ask them for feedback. And then as well, once you are on your third, fourth version, you can start sharing it with business angels outside of your inner circles. Um, and there's a saying, I've said it before in, in another video, but I'll say it again here in the industry. If you ask for money, you will get advice. If you, get, you ask for advice, you will get money. Um, so think about who you're asking, which, which investor you're asking and what's their expertise and what's their field and how they could help you. And if you ask for that help, that will feel more emotionally invested in your company and eventually, hopefully, you will get some investment for them. So again, one page, just one side, synthesize, be to the point and share it and iterate. That's the investment summary. The second document is a pitch deck. There's hundreds of videos in YouTube on how to do a pitch deck. My personal take on this is that, well, two things. One, start from the investment summary and work from there. You have a very good basis to start working on, on, on your longer document, but stick to maximum 20 slides on that pitch deck, okay? People get bored, people don't like to read long documents, stick to 20 slides and leave it open for questions, right? People might have questions and they can ask you and then you will look very professional if you have thought about that answer. Uh, the main sections here on a pitch deck um, are the typical ones. I would start with a small introduction, your elevator pitch, if you want. The problem, and here you can start weaving a bit of storytelling. You have more space now. So you could put, for example, another slide on alternatives. How are your customer target audience solving that specific problem and why is it not ideal, right? And then you come as a hero to save the day and propose your solution. Another section that you might want to include, it's a good one, optional, not necessary, but if you have good, good, uh, good things to say, please do it, is a why now section. What are the forces of the market that are uh, making it right for you now to innovate in this space and make a lot of money out of it? Uh, obviously, to make a lot of money, you need a business model, so that should be the next section. Uh, your traction, who are your competitors, if there's any other players in, in the field, and you want to be seen as, as a better option, um, perhaps playing in a specific niche or a specific space that's big enough to make a lot of money, but also a new space that nobody else is competing uh, exactly in, right? You can include as well a roadmap on what's your go-to-market strategy, what are the innovations you're gonna bring into the market during, during time. Um, your team, please include a bit more detailed bios of the, of the main people in your company. Um, another option, optional slide here would be exits in your industry, right? If you have good examples of companies that have provided nice multiples of the investment to their investors, um, you might include it here. But it's an optional slide, um, up to you if you want to include it or not, if you've got good, good examples there. Finally, uh, I would end with the financial projections and the use of the money in this round, right? Um, the details of the round, like pre-money valuation, how much you're gonna invest, uh, you're gonna raise, sorry, and, uh, and the use of the money. So again, it's an iterative process. Your first pitch deck is not gonna be uh, ideal. It's gonna be a good thing, I'm, I trust in you but probably you will need to iterate a few times to get to your best possible pitch deck before your equity crowdfunding campaign. And again, you have space here. So think about how you st use storytelling. What's the purpose of the company? What are your mission, your vision, and even the personality of your brand, the archetype of your brand, right? So bring it to life. You have a bit more space there. The third document that uh, I would suggest you to work on is financial projections, right? Some investors want it. You have included it already, some very top line numbers in both the pitch deck and the investment summary, but some investors will want more detail there. And of course, your startup and even projecting two months ahead is a bit of a, of a wild guess. Uh, projecting four, seven years to an exit, that's even a wilder guess. Uh, but what I would say is make your assumptions explicit 
and justify them. Say why you think those assumptions are sound. Uh, and as long as you th it feels like you're covering all the angles and that you're not forgetting anything, uh, investors will be happy with that. And they might give you some feedback and you might need to adjust it. Again, it's all of this is an iterative process. So if, if an investor comes back to you with a really good suggestion that why you're not launching in such market because they are there's a space there for you to operate, etc. Then include those things as well and make it more robust, more solid for new investors that come a bit late in the process uh, to see that you're covering everything that you need to cover. The fourth document, it's actually not a document, it's an elevator pitch, right? So this elevator pitch, it's a 30 to 60 second pitch that you would do in this infamous elevator. Nobody goes in the elevator together anymore after COVID, but hey. And in that, you have that opportunity to a potential investor to tell them about your business, what are you doing, who are you doing it for, um, what's your business model, how you make money of that, and what problem are you solving. All, all of that in 30 to 60 seconds, very quick. Again, iterative process. Your first elevator pitch is not going to be good enough, but just keep going at it, right? And make sure that the people with those 30 seconds are getting what you're about and what you're trying to do, uh, and they're clear about that. The final document uh, is face-to-face -face presentation, number five. So in here, I would recommend you, yes, you can start from your pitch deck as a guide, as, as a base, but do not read from a pitch deck on a face-to-face on, -face on a Zoom presentation this day and age, uh, because that looks very poorly, right? I would say strip down all the words, keep some impactful images and some some few words just to help you out um, to, to understand where you are and, 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 and help you and, and support what you're saying, but no more than that, right? And think about how some investors will give you 20, 30 minutes and some other investors will give you just three minutes to go through the whole presentation. So you might need to have different versions there. Uh, some of them with a lot of slides explaining with a lot of detail what you're trying to do and another one's just with the essential things that you have captured for example in the investment summary okay so that's the last one think a lot about storytelling tell a story on those presentations it's so powerful people remember stories okay so so tell a story on those face-to-face -face presentation and you're off to a good start so that's pretty much it those are the five documents that you will need for an equity crowdfunding campaign um, if you have to remember one thing, I've said it so many times, but I'll say it again, repetition legitimizes, iterate, okay? So just don't, don't stay with the first version. Probably it's going to be good, but you will have a lot of room for improvement and, and keep iterating and you'll get to a very, very good version of those five documents for you. That's all for today. Uh, please share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.